Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobelman. In this video, we're transferring the insides of an Elite desk computer into a full-size case. This allows us to upgrade to a full power supply and full-size GPU. So this is how you do it. You would take the lid off first, put that aside, and then take this computer and just put it in. Wow, this is actually good to, I can't believe it. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Let's get serious about this. So here's our HP 800 G2 Elite desk. PC. If you're unsure which one you have, there's a link in the description so you can compare it to yours, but it should be similar to 800 G1 and G3. Also, some of the older PCs may apply to as well. So if you have an older version of HP, chances are it will work as well. So what are some of the concerns when it comes to putting this inside of an aftermarket case? The main concern is obviously the motherboard. Is this motherboard going to fit inside of that case, will it align properly, will I be able to tighten it down, scroll it down, or will it even fit in the back when it comes to this back panel connectors? Well, I did some research and I actually made a custom back panel for this that will go inside of the aftermarket case. Because you've noticed here, this one is actually not removable, this is part of the case. So if you transfer the motherboard to anything else, you're not going to have a plate, back plate for the connectors it's just going to be a hole. Wherever you see metal here, it's just going to be a hole. But I made a 3D printed custom plate for myself so that way I shouldn't have this problem at all. And hopefully that works out. So that's our major problem. In this case, we're going to concentrate on that major problem is the transferring of the motherboard and everything that's connected on top of it to make sure it fits. Because if the motherboard doesn't fit, then what's the point? We can't do anything else. Hard drives and everything else, I'm not worried about because everything is just connected to the serial connector and that's fine. We don't have to worry about that. The other thing is the power supply. Power supply is smaller. It still may fit, but there might be a hole in the back there, but that's okay. That's one of the reasons to upgrade to a bigger case so you can upgrade to a bigger power supply. So if we move this over, if I pop this open like this, so we're gonna transfer it hopefully into the new case as well, so we wouldn't have to worry about that. But if you're upgrading to another power supply, you may have to get an adapter that allows you to transfer to these type of connectors. There's a link in the description for that if you're doing this, so don't worry about that. You can definitely buy them, they're not super expensive or anything like that. So here is an example of a panel that goes in the back here, and we don't have this. This is just from another motherboard, so we need to have a custom one, otherwise we're just gonna have a hole. And again, I made that in the 3D printed, so I'm good there. Another concern is whether we're gonna be able to power it on and off. So what do I mean by that? The front panel, right here, has a switch. Hopefully we can just connect it to the aftermarket case, and we'll see what just happened. We're just gonna have to test it out. This is a test in progress. With all these things in mind, I don't necessarily recommend that you do this like I'm doing, but if it's successful, hey, if you wanna do it, that's fine. Just do it at your own risk, just so you know, all right, guys? All right, let's start taking this apart. We're gonna start with removing the power supply first. We're gonna disconnect the power cables here. While I'm at it, I'm gonna disconnect the front panel as well. Okay. I'm going to disconnect everything that's on here, USB, all the serial cables, I'm going to disconnect all of these, all of this is disconnected, I want to make sure it's out of the way so we can start unscrewing stuff. So as you can see, these type of PCs, they use Torx type of screw, as you can see here, but you can also use a flathead like this, which is what I'm going to use, because I forget where my Torx screw is at, but I do have one. All right, I'm going to move this flap like this, I'm going to disconnect the power supply wire like this, and I'm going to unplug it here. There's a one more connector here that's plugged for the power supply. All right, I'm gonna remove that. Back of this for the power supply has three screws. I'm going to remove those as well. All right, with the screws removed, there's a button here that you just press down and then slide the power supply like so. I'm just gonna set it down here because it's easier to show like this. So you press the button down and just pull it out. I'm going to remove the serial cable to get that out of the way. Okay, there's our power supply. So we got eight screws to remove. There's one there, one there, one there, there's one there, one there, one there, seven, and then eight right there. So I'm just going to remove those. I definitely recommend a torch screw for this because it's not easy to remove with a flathead. So here's a problem. The whole motherboard is actually being held down through the heatsink 
onto the case itself on the back side back here. All right, well, let me see if we can work, work our way around that. I'm going to remove the heat sink as well and then see if we can come, let it come loose. The problem is attaching it back into the original case, so that's not going to work. So what that means is that we have to get another heat sink for this. That might work for it. Maybe. We'll see. I'll give it a shot. I have a spare heat sink that we can try, but I'm not sure if it's going to work. I'm going to remove it and see. All right, I'm going to disconnect the fan, CPU fan here. I'm going to remove the heat sink. All right. Now the motherboard is finally free. So I'm going to take it out. Oh, I forgot to disconnect something here. So I'm going to take it out. I'm going to slide it like so. And we're going to take it out. And hopefully our heatsink that I have will work on that. We'll see. I'm going to test it out actually right away before we actually do anything else. But you can see where it was attached, where it was holding down to the back of this through the motherboard using the heatsink. Here's a quick comparison of the motherboard that came out of the uh, HP computer and here's an aftermarket one. This is from an older computer but these are the standard size ATX motherboards. Compared to this one, the holes um, actually do align for the motherboard um, to be screwed down. Here, let me show you the side view here. So I'm very hopeful that the back will fit properly inside the new case. You can see that this one is actually thicker while this one is longer. So let's give it a shot, guys. I'm, if I'm lucky, this CPU that is coming off of uh, i7 uh, 4770 will fit on top of this, which I think it may, but We'll, we'll just have to see if it works. So of course before you do this make sure you clean it, the thermal paste carefully and then reapply the new one, don't go too crazy. I'm just gonna see if it fits just, so, just for the sake of moving the video along. All right, it's a line, looks like it's going to work. Let's see. Wow, that actually connected has a good connection. Wow, I'm surprised. All right, well, let me see if this connects properly. Perfect. That's, <laughs> that's amazing, guys. All right, now let's see if we can put it into the aftermarket case. Let's see. So just to show you real quick, I did a 3D print off the back panel. So um, if you don't have a 3D printer, um, just figure something out. Maybe if you use some, you know, really thin aluminum, maybe you can cut it the size or something, or you can just leave the holes there, but it's up to you. I decided to make a little 3D print out of that. All right, let's have a look, see if this will align. I will try to get a best angle as I can for you. Hopefully this works. So far, it's looking all right. All right, I think, I think that's gonna work, guys. Let me see here. Wow, it actually aligned. It's already in there because there's one part of it that's already holding it properly. Wow, this is actually good. To, I can't believe it. How's it looking back there? Oh my God. Oh my God, I can't believe this. This is actually going to work. Honestly, I did not think it was gonna work properly. Well, there's still ways to go guys, so let's Let's, let's see how it goes, but I'm gonna get the screws down. Hopefully those align properly. And you know, we'll see, we'll see. I'm gonna try to turn it on afterwards, so stick around for that. All right, so far so good. I'm not gonna worry about a couple of these screws here for now. I just wanna see if this thing will work. Um, obviously you can move these standoffs and hopefully um, there is a place to screw them down so you can uh, put those in there as well. But here's the main reason. There's the main reason to see if this is actually going to work. I know I can get the power supply turned on and everything running right now, but let's see if I can put a full size video card in here with this motherboard, right? Wouldn't that be very important? 
I'd say it is. Let's see if we can do that. All right, so here's a full-size video card. All right. Um, looks like we're gonna have to unscrew this one. I'm gonna open this up real quick. I mean, what's the point of doing this if you can't install a full-size GPU in this thing, right? That's the main thing. That's the main reason. And of course, to upgrade the power supply as well. Is it aligning? Oh my God. Guys, do you see that? Do you see that? Oh my God. It actually works. Look at that. Would you look at that? It works. It fit perfectly. Oh my God, look. That's just amazing. That's amazing. Wow, I'm glad that works. So you can put any size of video card, guys. Any size. Any size. Again, if you're looking for this type of stuff, to make sure that the video card can be used, like if it's a high powered one, you're gonna need extra power. And this thing is not going to do it for you. You're gonna have to upgrade to a full size power supply. And of course these connectors, they're not designed to go in here. Um, you need, a, this one has a six pin, um, two, two six pins that go in there. And for that you need a full power supply or you would need an adapter for this for sure, but it ain't gonna handle it. So you're gonna need a new power supply and of course, if you're interested in any of that, there are links in the description for anything you guys need. Check it out. For now, I'm just gonna remove it because I wanna see if it can power on properly. Because now, our main issue, I mean, this is so amazing that it works, is make sure that it actually powers up, you know? So let's do a power supply here, real quick. So I got the power supply temporarily installed. And definitely, again, you need the actual full-size power supply. This is just temporary, I just wanna see if it'll work. And you can see here, that it's just only held by a couple of screws up here and this is gonna be an issue for the power cord as well, but you know what, I just wanna see if it'll work, right? All right, let's get it. Um, so I'm gonna power plug in all this stuff. Hopefully it reaches. All right, good. 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 So this is our audio. Let's see if it works on this one here. Here's the plug for the audio front panel. Wow, that works. All right, great, great. I am so constantly surprised at how well this stuff works. So what's our other thing? We need to check, this is our front USB. This goes here. Wow, so far, great guys. Look at this. Look at that, would you look at that. Here's our system fan connector. Let's see if it works here. So far, I'm suspecting that it will. That connects just fine. And our front power on panels, here they are. Oh yeah, before I forget, here is the cable that powers your drive. So whatever you have, you know, your hard drive or a solid state drive. So this is the one that goes here. You don't need this when you get a different power supply. But this time we're gonna to have to transfer it over if you're not power upgrading your power supply. So that's that. For our reference, a regular power supply will have this 24 pin um, connector that goes directly to the motherboard. Uh, again, there's an adapter you can get in the link, link in the description that allows you to connect to here. It basically transfers this into that so that way you can just use it. Okay, one quick note. Here is the power switch. It goes to here, like so. So in this second one, second connector right there. That's the power switch. I had to do a little bit of experimentation to see which one is which. Um, same thing, it goes for, if you want to connect other stuff, you have to route other stuff to it. And whether you want the hard drive light or not, power LED and reset switch as well. I'm assuming reset switch is kind of next to it. So, uh, but I know this is going to work. We're gonna test it right now. And now a moment of truth, and there it is, it powers on. All right guys, that's awesome. Now I'm gonna make sure that everything is actually working as it should be before I actually release this video. So don't worry about that. 
I do want to get to this point where I show that it works. So we can tell that everything fits fine, everything's connected, even the front USBs are connected, the front panel, we just you can just figure that out, which one goes where, but we do know that the power switch was the most important one, is working and it's right there. Uh, we know if we want to do, if we want to upgrade the power supply, we can do so. We, there's an adapter you can buy. And the main thing I'm going to do right now is make sure I'm going to connect a hard drive here and make sure everything works before I release this video. If you're watching it, that means everything is working perfectly. So this is very, very surprising to me, but I am so glad that it does work because I get this question all the time, guys. Um, if you want to connect some of these fans, extra fans, you can certainly do so once you get a new power supply. You can basically just plug it in like so. You see this one, this particular PC has, um, you can connect it directly, but these are old Molex connectors. Um, the newer uh, PCs and new power supplies, I should say, um, including the new cases, will have this type. So you would just basically plug it in, then you would have system fan, which I highly recommend that you do. Extra fa extra system fan, because there's one up here, one up here, one, one up there. So there is that. I hope you like this video. Please share it. Leave a like. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. All right, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.